today at uh, Dartford in Kent. The river that uh, runs through here originates in Gloucester, 215 miles away from where we are currently. What happened here uh, at Dartford is two tunnels and a bridge were constructed uh, to allow people to cross, whereas previously they had used ferries. The first tunnel was proposed here uh, back in the late uh, 1700s. A calculation was done with regard to cost, but unfortunately it was deemed too expensive at the time, so the plans were shelved. The actual first serious attempt at a tunnel was started in the 1930s. Unfortunately, the onset of World War II um, meant the project was abandoned because resources were needed more importantly elsewhere, as you can imagine. After the World War II was finished, um, the project was restarted in the 1950s using a great head shield to help people tunnel without the risk of collapse uh, of ground onto the top of them. There was still the hazard of working in compressed air, particularly here in Dartford. Despite the fact that we were using a shield to protect the men and support the ground while we were tunnelling, compressed air was needed to support the ground and to keep the water out. But it meant working at a higher atmospheric pressure than normal. Unfortunately, on a daily basis, workers uh, face the risk of decompression sickness, or the bends as, uh, as it's commonly known. Quite an agonizing illness until all the uh, nitrogen was out of their system. The tunnel on the right-hand side behind me. Um, this combined in 1986 to form part of the M25 London Orbital Motorway. It was quite clear from an early stage uh, after the opening of the second tunnel that a third crossing would still be needed here. An evaluation was conducted and the tunnel was not the preferred option this time. So a bridge was commissioned with a fund, a private equity fund being set up in 1988 to fund the construction of the bridge that you can see behind me here today. There are wires coming down at a diagonal uh, from points up the top of the bridge and these support the actual steel structure underneath. And at the time of its opening, this bridge was the longest cable stayed bridge in Europe. The bridge has a total length of three kilometres and it rises 60 metres above the river. Although thousands of vehicles of all types use this uh, crossing every day, a little known fact is that there is the possibility to cross the river here on a bicycle. So you can come along, you can go to Connect Plus, they will allow you to uh, wait while a vehicle is ordered for you. You put your bicycle in the vehicle, which is specially equipped, you sit in the vehicle with it and the driver will drive you across. And you can do this from either end, quite a unique idea. Many people over many years work hard to produce what we have today, an important crossing point of the River Thames. All three elements that create the Dartford Crossing, as we see it here today, are a testament to the fortitude and tenacity and professional skills of the civil engineers employed at the time. Britain was built on engineering prowess. We hope that the uh, legacy that is left by these people will inspire young people to become civil engineers for the future uh, projects that we have in this country, following in the footsteps of the likes of Brunel to become engineers uh, that we desperately need for the future.